My name is Reverend Kevin Murphy, and I serve as associate pastor at the Enon Tabernacle Baptist Church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, under the leadership of Reverend Dr. Alan E. Waller. And I want to welcome you to this afternoon's Home Ownership Workshop, The Road to Home Ownership. On behalf of the uh, National Foundation for Credit Counseling Faith-Based Initiative, which is led by our illustrious leader, Brother Herman Palmer, who is Vice President uh, at the National Foundation for Credit Counseling, along with uh, Pastor Cedric Jones, the Senior Minister of Mount Zion, the historic Mount Zion Baptist Church of Philadelphia, uh, as well as Sister Latina Gonzalez and uh, Cora Fulmer, who you will be hearing from later, uh, representing F Freddie Mac and Diversified uh, Resource Network. It is uh, my honor to serve as a host for this workshop. And I, again, I just want to welcome all of you. And I, I just want to emphasize the fact that every time you receive notification about one of these workshops, it is open to everyone, all of your friends, all of your family. So when you receive it from us, please distribute it widely and encourage persons to come and to receive this significant financial information and to receive it for free. That's what our goal is, is to get this information out to as many people as we possibly can so all of us can achieve our financial goals and objectives and, and, and do so in a way that's comfortable for all of us. And with that, again, I say welcome to you. And at this time, I want to turn it over to again to one of our leaders, Pastor Cedric Jones, Jr., Senior Minister at Mount Zion Baptist Church of Philadelphia. Thank you so much, Associate. Uh, Pastor Kevin Murphy, and um, on behalf of all of us at Mount Zion, we are glad uh, to be part of this Faith Alliance. We have uh, two, three things that we like to focus on consistently, Christ-like love, um, Christ-like love, daily discipleship, and shared ministry. And so this represents our shared ministry portion, although some could say how we exercise our stewardship is an important part of our discipleship. In addition to that, there are two of our core public ministry areas which fit quite nicely, education and economics. And home ownership or where your residence is, at least in the United States of America, is a critical determinant of a lot of things that impact education and also economics. Unfortunately, we do not live in a society where every student has the same chance. And so those persons who are in areas with high ownership often have better educational outcomes. Better educational outcomes lead to different economic outcomes. And in addition to being a direct factor in terms of home uh, ownership and equity, it is something that impacts these other areas. And I'm sure that this evening, if, whether you are joining on behalf of others, perhaps you're already in a place that you are quite comfortable with and you are secure in home ownership. I know where I serve in Southwest Philadelphia, um, home ownership is increasingly difficult to attain, even in a city like Philadelphia, which historically compared to some East Coast cities have been more affordable. So I'm excited today to be a participant and just to be one in the number. I'm thankful in advance for uh, those pastors and others who have responded to a personal invitation to join uh, this afternoon, you and your um, your congregants are welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. And we're going to have yet another fantastic uh, session. I believe Herman Palmer or, uh, or Ms. Latanya Gonzalez will be able to uh, correct that if it's wrong, but I'm happy to welcome all of you. And if you do not have a uh, church home. There are plenty of churches to choose from on this particular uh, day. And so we welcome you on behalf of Mount Zion and the Faith Alliance. Thanks. Thank you to both of our pastors. I'm LaTanya Gonzalez with Freddie Mac. We are so delighted to be here with this wealth building series that we have been working on since actually last December. Freddie Mac is a secondary mortgage company that purchases mortgage loans 
from the primary market. What people don't know is that we also provide financial literacy information in the form of Credit Smart. Tonight, you, are, you guys are going to be delighted to meet one of the architects in the industry and especially in credit counseling. But before that, I want to go ahead and introduce Herman Palmer from the National Foundation for Credit Counseling so he can tell you a lot more about this endeavor and all the things we plan to do this year and next year. Herman? He may actually be admitting people. So I will just oh, let you go. guys. Oh, are you I here? Forgot, I forgot that I was on mute. Okay, I was thinking you were doing the admin. So we'll switch roles and I'll work as the producer. And I'd like you to tell everybody more about our initiative. Sure. Uh, and good evening, everyone. Welcome. As you've heard, my name is Ramon Palmer. I am the Vice President of Outreach and Inclusion for the National Foundation for Credit Counseling, affectionately known as the NFCC. Before we get started, I want to give you a little bit about the organization. We were founded in 1951 and are the nation's first and largest nonprofit dedicated to improving people's financial well being. Our mission is to support our member agencies in their work to empower consumers to address their financial challenges and take charge of their futures. We have over 300 member offices serving all 50 states Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico with over 50 member agencies and over 1,100 certified counselors ready, willing, and able to help. And we help everybody, multicultural communities of color, uh, military families and veterans, small business owners, and student loan borrowers. I am excited for this faith-based alliance. What we want to do here is to make sure we create a resource for the community so that they can engage and get the information they need to make informed decisions so that they can get access to resources so that they can learn, take action and create better outcomes for themselves. The areas that we will cover in this series, we talk about general financial counseling. We talk about housing counseling, which is made up of pre-purchase counseling, foreclosure and eviction prevention and reverse mortgage counseling. We also will have opportunities to provide counseling around small business ownership to help small business owners overcome their consumer debt challenges while also helping them to separate their business finances from their personal finances. And a popular subject now, student loan counseling to help struggling student loan borrowers navigate the complex repayment options and help them to identify sustainable strategies for them to enjoy long-term success. So. One thing I will ask is that we ask you, I'm going to put a link in the chat box. This is a survey. We want you to provide your feedback to the sessions because we are constantly looking to improve and address those topics of interest to you. We are incredibly excited about this effort. We believe that it will genuinely provide a good result to all who hear it. Uh, and without further ado, I'm going to pass it on to our fearless presenter today, Ms. Cora Fulmer. Cora? Thank you so much, Herman, and welcome to each of you. We're pretty excited about tonight's presentation. We've got a lot of information to share, and I want to encourage you, if you don't have your pad and pencil handy right now, please, this would be the time to go ahead and get that so that you can take notes and also be prepared to ask questions. If there are questions that on things that we cover throughout tonight's um, presentation, we're here to try and answer the questions that you may have around home ownership. If that's your desire, if, if you have a, a, a desire to deal with credit issues or anything of that nature, you've got the experts on the call today that is prepared to be able to address those, those questions for you. Now we're using the Zoom platform and it's important that that you make sure that your mics remain muted at all times in order to avoid any background noise. As we go through today's presentation, please make sure you enter your questions or comments in the chat box. Uh, we've got Latanya, uh, Reverend uh, Kevin Murphy, Reverend Patrick, uh, 
Pastor Cedric Jones, and also Herman, who will be there to actually address any questions that you may have. And we're laughing right now because I've had a difficult time remembering some of the names of our uh, team. And uh, so we know that we've got Pastor Cedric, Herman, Pastor Kevin, LaTanya, and myself, and we'll all be here to try and help you any way that we possibly can. So thank you, hold on to your seats, and feel free to start taking notes as we go through tonight's presentation. So here's our agenda. Here's what we're going to cover today. We're going to talk about why is homeownership so important? Why is it important for you? The rights and responsibilities of a homeowner Barriers to home ownership and understanding the loan process. What is that process all about? Shopping for a home, the home inspection and the survey process, fair housing and the importance of you understanding your rights under fair housing, and then insurance, how important it is that you have the insurance protection to protect your assets. And then we'll have our closing remarks from all of our teammates that are on this particular presentation. So let's talk a little bit about high home ownership. You know, studies show that home ownership has a significant impact on one's net worth, educational achievements, civic participation, health, and overall quality of life. And you know, it, it we we wonder if if that's truly the case. And but research has shown that home ownership has an impact in all of that. People aspire to become a homeowner for the financial and social benefits that it provides. And home ownership also adds jobs to our economy. So is home ownership a good idea? I guess that's the question. If you're here because you're not a homeowner and you'd like to be a homeowner at some point, please raise your hand so that we can see the hand raises to see how many people are truly interested in home ownership. If you're interested in home ownership, please go ahead and raise your hand. And guys, we're beginning to get a couple of people to raise their hand and home ownership is for them. And Herman, if you could just take note of the raised hands as we go through today's presentation. So is home ownership a good idea? Well, let's kind of talk about it. And we've got more people raising their hands. Very good. Affordability. Yeah, there's it's low down payment. And we're going to talk about that. Now, a lot of people have some ideas about the down payment requirement for home ownership, but really there are programs out there in order to get you into home ownership. So affordability, low down payment. Yes, we do know that. Home ownership in some communities can be cheaper than rent. It really can. And uh, home ownership, even though the housing prices are increasing in certain markets, the housing prices in other markets are decreasing. But when you look at the increase in the housing prices, you also see an increase in rent. And what's happening, you're paying someone else's mortgage. You're not getting credit for the payments that you're making on another person's mortgage. And then the other thing is supply and demand. In some markets, we are very much aware that in some markets, it's very difficult to find affordable housing. In some markets, affordable housing is still achievable. I live in the Orlando area and the average home, a uh, three bedroom home, two car garage uh, with a, a backyard, is selling for somewhere around $325,000. So we have a lot of Northerners coming to the Central Florida area looking at home ownership. But I know in other markets, that's an unbelievable price. And that's not anything that individuals can receive in their particular area. So there are some advantages then to home ownership. Advantages, owning your own piece of dirt. That's a great advantage. Tax advantages. We can write off the interest that's being paid. For right now, that's still a possibility. It could be a forced savings. If the property appreciates in value, we can always see an appreciation, um, some forced savings through that appreciation. It could be cheaper than rent. In my market, a two-bedroom apartment 
is going somewhere between $25 to $2,700, depending upon where you rent. But I know in the California area, it's a whole lot more expensive than that. Um, it could build wealth. And it's all about, and, and I'm going to tell you the secret, it's all about location, location, location. And so it's important as you look to buy your home that you've got a clear understanding of what's going in, on in this particular area. And you can always, and this is the one that I like the most, it builds a legacy. It's a wealth creation. But you know, with everything, there are advantages and there's also disadvantages. So when I start looking at the disadvantages, we're, look, we're looking at the expenses related to getting into home ownership. And we mentioned that, but we also know, and later on in tonight's presentation, I'm going to tell you about all of the possibilities of resources that are there in order to help with the cost to get into home ownership. That upfront cost, yeah, you got to put some skin in the game. You will have to put some skin in the game. And if you're looking at achieving home ownership in the next 30 days, 60 days, 120 days, or by the first of the year, it's going to, it's really important that you start saving. And it may not appreciate in value if you don't buy right. Knowing the area, knowing the communities is critical in buying a home. It could be more than rent. If you buy a lot, you know, there are McMansions out there in the community. And if you buy a McMansion, you may, you may be paying more than rent. And then you've got the maintenance responsibility. And I've always said that I am not one for a, a single family detached home because I don't like cutting the grass. I don't like the maintenance of property and I would be I would have to pay someone. So a condo or a townhouse would be just right for me. And most uh, more complex to relocate. And that's, that's the, the way it is. The, the average individual, when they buy a home, they really plan on staying in that property for at least a period of five years. But you know what? It's so important that you know your rights in anything that you do. We never do a presentation without us talking about the consumer rights. And you do have rights in home ownership. Shop for the best loan and compare all charges and fees. There could be an opportunity for you to negotiate. You know, when I bought my first house, I was just happy to be at the table. You don't have to be happy to be at the table. Make sure you understand the process. And that's why we're bringing you this particular class today. Be informed about the total cost of getting into a new home. Be aware of the charges, and we'll talk about that. Know about the disclosures, the, the, your, your right to get the Truth in Lending RESPA Integrated Disclosure Statement within three days of the application and the HUD one within 24 hours prior to the closing. Know what fees will be charged and also understand the professionals that you'll encounter. Again, this will be the largest yeah, purchase. The election was bad. I'm so so we have got a caller that is unmuted. If you could please um, mute yourself because we can hear your conversation. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So make sure that you understand all of the professionals that you'll encounter. We'll talk about those professionals tonight and um, make sure that you're aware of what their, what their responsibility is to you as the potential home buyer. So what's your responsibility? Just like there are responsibilities for the people you're dealing with, make sure you understand your responsibilities too. And, and the only way that I can surmise all of this that we've got on the screen, be a good neighbor. You know, there are certain things that you should do. Make your payments on time. Make sure you do routine maintenance. Uh, paint your property. Keep the, the area clean. Uh, just be a good neighbor and follow the neighborhood requirements. If there's a homeowners association, it's going to be critical that you, you follow that association. In my neighborhood, we do have an association. And you cannot, when the, when the garbage truck comes, your garbage uh, container cannot be in sight. 
of the other uh, neighbors in your community. So you have to have it in a certain location. So read the uh, association guidelines and make sure that you're real clear on that. So what are some of the steps you ask? You're going to need to collect a lot of documentation. And I think it's real critical that you know up front what's the documentation that you have to have. So the first thing, make sure you don't trash your pay stubs because you're going to need to make uh, the lender aware of how much income you've got coming in. So make sure you start collecting pay stubs. Also, the W-2s for the last two years, make sure you have that stuff. A recent bank statement. If you're not getting a paper statement, because a lot of banks have gone paperless, make sure that you go to the website and you're able to print a copy of your bank statements. Tax returns for the last two years. If, if also you're going to sign a IRS 4506T, and that gives the uh, lender the opportunity to verify what's on your tax return. Because you may say on the tax return that you give them that the amount of money you made last year was X, but what you filed with the IRS may be something totally different. So this 4506T is a verification form that's sent to the IRS in order for them to get that information. If you're divorced, make sure you have the divorce papers. If you filed bankruptcy in the past, there's no problem with that, but make Make sure you have that documentation with you when you're prepared to go in and talk to, to the lender. Make sure that you not give your lender the originals of all of this documentation. You really want to hold on to the originals uh, for your stuff because you may need that for other reasons. So don't only give them copies. So what then are the barriers that prevent an individual from becoming a homeowner? There are a lot of barriers and we're gonna talk through them pretty quickly. And I know if you've got questions on anything that I've discussed or as I go through the presentation, please go to the chat box and write in your question. And we've got the experts on the call with me today, our, my teammates, who will be more than happy to try and address those questions. And Latanya and Herman, if there are questions that, are, um, that you feel that everyone should hear the answer to, then stop me at any point and we'll be more than happy to go through it, okay? So we've got high debt as an issue, lack of cash, poor credit, and the lack of affordable housing stock. And depending upon where you are, depending upon the community that you're wanting to buy in, you could have any of these barriers and, and also depending upon how you've dealt with your credit in the past. But let me say something to you. Do not make a decision that you cannot qualify for home, for home ownership and you decide to self-select that I don't qualify. Don't do that. There are a lot of individuals who have self-selected and made a determination that they don't qualify, but they, they were pleasantly surprised when they went to the lender and the lender said, I've got a product for you we can help you. And so don't self-select. Don't say, oh, my credit is too bad. My debt is too high. There's nothing that I can do in order to be a homeowner. I'm here to tell you for years, I've been a counselor for over 30 years, and I've worked with clients who have had um, credit challenges, who have had income problems and um, or debt problems, and we've worked them through it. And one of the things that I like about this particular team and working with Herman is the fact that we bring a team of qualified housing and credit counselors that can aid you through the process. So please don't leave the call before we're finished because we're gonna give you some great resources and links to organizations that can help you through the process. So let's take a look at barrier one, high monthly debt. It may look as if you are about to fall off a cliff. You may have 
72 credit cards. You may have just bought an automobile and your automobile payment may be six, $700. And you think, how in the world would I be able to qualify? There are some things that you need to know in order to determine whether or not you are eligible and can qualify for a new home. So here's how Linda's pre-qualify all of us there's, there's no mystery to this. Make sure you understand that depending upon the loan product that you receive, whether it's an FHA loan, a VA loan, or a conventional loan, they all have housing ratios. And you have to qualify under the prevailing ratios. And so if you're looking at an FHA loan, there are ratios for FHA, ratios for VA, and ratios for conventional products. But these ratios are not carved in stone. There are also products for first-time home buyers. So if you are a first-time home buyer, you've never bought a home, or you have not had a home in the last three years under your name, you can qualify as a first-time home buyer. And those products offer a different ratio depending upon your income level and also the location in which you're buying your home. There are all sorts of special products. So when you start talking to the lender, you really want to ask the question, what kind of products do you have for a first-time home buyer? The other thing, when you're dealing with debt, yeah, debt can be a problem, but you also need to know lenders look at what's called compensating factors. Compensating factors, we all have compensating factors. The compensating factors is the good stuff. That's the stuff that makes us look good. The things that we've done um, wisely in the handling of our credit, our employment, all of that other good stuff, okay? So under compensating factors, they're gonna look at well, what's your deposit relationship with the bank? Do you have any money in the bank right now saved? That's a compensating factor. You may have some challenges in the past with credit, but it was all due to the fact that you were unemployed at a time, or maybe you had an injury on the job and you were on workman's comp with a reduction of income, and then you got a large settlement. So is there money in the bank? That's one of the questions they're gonna look at as a compensating factor. Your length of employment. I am a job hopper. Before I went into business for myself and I got the best boss in the world, whose name is Cora Fulmore, and I love her dearly. Um, I hot jobs all the time. But I had this guy that I was married to by the name of Willie. And Willie is a lifer on a job. Willie was on his job for over 30 years. I could not stand to be on a job that long. So I didn't have the length of employment history, but Willie did. Willie was a lifer on his job. So even though I didn't have that as a compensating factor. I had someone else who did. A record of paying your rent on time. That's really important. If you've paid your rent on time and you can get your landlord to vouch for you, that's really important. That's a compensating factor. Or a good credit score. That's also a compensating factor. So what will the lenders consider? Here's how they look at it. Remember, I told you I was a job hopper. If you've not been on a job or had job stability for more than for two years or more, they look at that as, you know, well, I'm not too sure if I like that, but if you've been in the same line of work, I've been in the same industry, even though I was a job hopper, I've been in the same industry for over 30 years, okay? But I've not had the same job with the same company for more than two years. I may have gone in order for more money. And if you can document that and you can show that, then they may look at it as a compensating factor. Another thing is credit profile. They want to know who you owe, how much you owe, and how have you paid lately? How are you paying people? They're looking at your credit scores. Now, there are products out there that will allow you to achieve home ownership with less than a, six credit, a 620 credit score. But for the average of 620 to 720, those are good, fairly good credit scores. 
but you can, there are products for first time home buyers for a little bit less of a credit score, maybe a 580 credit score. There are different products that will allow for a 580 credit score. Cash reserve, is there any money in the bank? Do you have at least one to two months of mortgage payment in the bank? And has that money been in your bank account for more than one or two months, okay? And they want to look at your current and your anticipated cost. Can you manage this house payment? If you're paying $2,500 a month right now, can you afford a $2,100 a month mortgage payment? Or can you afford a $2,600 mortgage payment? And then the price range is all based on those ratios and the debt. And I'm gonna show you how that's calculated. So there are before, debt- before you, before you go on, let me just yeah. add, uh, in that FICO score comparison, the higher the FICO score, the better off you'll be because it'll breed confidence on the part of the lender and yes. you'll wind up paying a lower rate because you have more confidence. So that's the reward for having a good FICO score. And sometimes you can have a 620, but you may made the conscious decision to say, you know what? I could get one now, get a house now, but I'm going to wait six months to a year to improve my credit score, recognizing that over the long term of the loan, I wind up paying less money. So that's one way you can manage your financials, you know, for the long haul. I just mm -hmm. wanted to add that. No, that's a very important point, Herman, and we appreciate you sharing that because that's the truth. As a counselor, that's what we look at and we make those recommendations. You can decide um, how much you're going to pay if, if a lender uh, says, well, you qualify for $3,000 a month. That doesn't mean you have to buy a house that has a house payment of $3,000 a month. You can make a decision that you only want to pay... Um, yeah, far less than that $1,500. It's up to you, but you got to find a house that's going to qualify for that type of payment, or you have to have a sizable amount of money in order to pay that debt down. So very good point. Thank you so much, Herman. Here's what they look at as it relates to debt. They're going to look at your installment um, accounts. That's anything that has a fixed term. Um, they're going to also look at your revolving accounts. That's anything where the payments can go up or down like credit card um, accounts. So the, the payment is based on the balance. Now, income wise, and, and this is really important, they're going to look at what's called your gross income. And the gross income is just that. It's gross because you don't spend gross dollars. You spend your net dollars. But they're going to look at your gross income in order to make a decision as to how much house you can afford. They're going to also look at what are the qualifying ratios, those same ratios I sure showed you a few minutes ago. They're going to look at the qualifying ratios based on the loan product that you're taking a look at. So before I go to this case study, I want you to um, go to the chat box real quickly. We know we got different churches represented on the call today, and we want to know what church are you representing? Just go to the chat box real quickly, and Herman and also Latanya will be looking at what you're saying. Just tell us, I'm representing XYZ Church, whatever that church is, or no church at all. Just let us know who invited you and all of that, okay? Please go to the chat box and start typing in and let us know. And Herman, if there in, there's any other information you'd like to get from the audience, please let them know. Will do. Thank you. Laura, thank you so much. This is LaTanya from Freddie Mac. I want to definitely do a big shout out to North Carolina. I've got two executive directors um, on the line with us. I see Carl Manning from Kingdom CDC. Celeste Collins from On Track, Western North Carolina. So even our housing counseling agencies, please go ahead and add in the chat where you're from. And I will keep looking at the chat right now, Herman. If you see anyone else, let me know. Will do. Very good, guys. Very good. 
So we appreciate you sharing this information because we, as Harman had, has mentioned, we've done several of these presentations and it's always good to know if our efforts are paying off by you being in attendance. And I must say it is paying off because we've got a pretty sizable number on the call tonight and, and we're just thankful, just thankful to have you all here. And, and I can add, we got Jackie Boyce of MMI, Money uh -huh. Management International. Okay. We, we got JC Vision and Associates, Dana Ingram. Oh, yes. Melinda Opperman from credit.org. Okay. Consumer All Education right. Services, Gregory Smalls. And Eugenio Alonzo, Consumer Puerto Rico. So thank oh, you. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Gosh, I know those folks in Puerto Rico. Very good, very good. Wow, that's great. Now, Thank gosh, you. you can always continue to, to chime in to the chat box so that we'll know where you're from and what agency or what uh, church you're representing. So thank you very much for chiming in. Let's do a quick case study. And, and this is a young lady by the name of Yolanda has a fairly decent income of $4,500 a month. That's a gross income, net income of $3,658 and a savings of $1,500. Take a look at Yolanda's obligations, monthly obligations. Just take a look at it. Uh, don't, don't start picking Yolanda apart yet. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to do that. But she's young, you know, she's got obligations here that she's paying for. And you can see what those obligations are. My question to you is this, what is the total debt and what debt will the lender count? What debt will the lender count? So um, start chiming into the chat box and we've got you know, Latanya on the call. Latanya will let us know uh, what you all are saying. And it looks like people are beginning to chime in. And um, guys, let, let us know what, what the, um, what will the lender count, first of all, and then what is the total debt? And Yolanda, if you see anybody chiming in, just let us know real quickly. I am checking right now. We still have people letting us know where they are from, Cora. So this is amazing. It's amazing. I know. It's amazing. I, I, I just have to say I'm so impressed that we have, you know, Philadelphia, Puerto Rico, North Carolina, Florida. I mean, and I think Credit Advisors Foundation, Eleanor. I'm not sure where exactly that is, but I'm just so happy you guys are on. Omaha, Nebraska. All righty, I'll take that. And we've got people still coming in on the call. This is just amazing. So let, let's, for time's sake, let me go ahead and um, just try and address what will the lender count? And, and one of, they're looking at the debt load. They're looking at the debt and how many months left to pay the debt. So all of the things that are automatically highlighting uh, right now are the things in which the lender will count. Now, so the other question is, and anybody who has a calculator handy, what is the total debt amount? What is the total debt amount? And any number, you know, I'll accept. <laughs> Just tell me what's the total debt amount. And this Toyota truck at the bottom, it is free and clear. So there's nothing owed on the Toyota, okay? Free and clear. So what's the total debt amount? And we'll come back to this and, and look at this a little bit closer later on. I know it's a lot to add up, right? Um, so when you get it, put it in the, in the box, okay? Take a screenshot of Cora, this. there's a quick question. Yes, what is, is it? Is cable a debt? Is it a collection? Mm. Well, it's a monthly obligation, right? It's a monthly obligation. It is not a... Um, 
this particular person, and you know what, you are, whoever asked that question has identified something that should not have been highlighted. This is a monthly obligation. If it was a collection, then that could be a, considered a debt. But this is a monthly obligation and they are not, this is not a debt that the lender will count. This is not a debt that the lender will count. So whoever uh, uh, addressed that, um, Tanya, keep their name and, and that particular person, tell them to put in the chat box uh, if they're representing an agency, let us know what agency, and then we will give them a Starbucks gift card. That's So make sure you get that information and we'll make sure that that happens. Okay. Yeah, they get a Starbucks gift card. Very that good. Was, that was from North Carolina on track, Western North Carolina. Thank you so much. Way to and go. Okay. Herman so, has an answer now. for the total debt. Okay, Laura, what is it? Uh huh. Four thousand one hundred and sixty-five dollars. Is he correct? Well, let's see in another slide. Okay, and Herman, can you tell us what you counted? Well, when you said total debt, I just painstakingly, I might add, went through <laughs> and, and added everything, just everything, highlighted and not highlighted, because yeah, it was everything. Okay. All right, and so that's the 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 rent, the um, life insurance, the food, all of those items, right? Including yes. the credit card debt, and yes. and so if you've done that, you're absolutely right. It's not the now the lender will not count all of that, right? He's not going to count all of that, and we're going to take a look and see what are the things that the lender will actually count. Okay, so one of the things that you want to consider when you're looking for a house you got to understand the terms and the terminology. One of the things um, that you'll hear a lot is I can pre-qualify you, pre-qualifications. Pre-qualifications is really a, a look at your income and it could be stated income without verification. Um, it And that's looking at your debt and they may have pulled a credit report, but they've not verified the information in the credit report. Um, and a lender will give you a pre-approval or pre-qualification. And that pre-qualification is, I've not verified anything, but I'm going to pre-qualify you based on ABC. It's good. It's as good as the paper that it's written on. You can't take it to the bank and say, you said that I could get this. What you want is that pre-approval. The pre-approval is really the final, uh, and it's not totally final because they're gonna look at your debt again, even before you close on that loan. And they're gonna pull the credit again, but it's closer to uh, a realization of how much I can afford based on what looking at my credit report, maybe verifying the, the debt that I have, uh, looking at maybe bank statements to see how much money I have, and then also looking at how I've paid my job stability and all of that. And that pre-approval is, is critical to you, but nothing is carved in stone. Nothing is carved in stone. So we're going to take a look at how the lenders actually qualify you. And here's how they do it. And I need somebody with a calculator to help me out with the calculations on this. The first thing they're going to look at is the total income, the gross monthly income. Now, like I said, gross income is that is just that you only spend net income. So they'll look at her income and it's $4,500 a month. Then they're going to say, well, what product are we going to use? This particular scenario is based on an FHA product. And with the FHA product, it's saying your housing ratio or your front end ratio can't be more than 31% of your gross monthly income. So somebody do the calculation for me. What yes. is 31% yes. of 4,500? Anybody can tell me. It is 13, uh, $13.95. Absolutely. Your house payment cannot be more than $13.95, but there are some other items that they take into consideration. They also look at your back-end ratio, and this is really important. So that pre-approval, uh, pre 
the pre-qualification that the lender is doing, you can do a cursor evaluation of your own finances and then go to the bank and, and, and hear what they have to say because they may have higher ratios for you. But the back end ratio, that's your house payment plus all of the debts can't be more than 43% of your gross monthly income. What's 43% of gross monthly income? 1935. 1935 you're absolutely right then the total monthly debt what are they going to what they're going to count are the things that we highlighted okay the things that they, we highlighted with the exception of the actual um cable bill they're not going to count the cable bill and i may have added the cable bill in this amount if i did i apologize um so let's say it's 895 dollars they're going to take that 895 and subtract it from the back end ratio and that gives you the maximum amount that you can afford with debt so even though it says that you could qualify with a payment of 1395 once they look at the debt, it has to go to the lower amount. And the lowest amount is the 1040. And, and that is the maximum amount your house payment can be, okay? That's the maximum amount. And so you can do the numbers. If you got a calculator at home, your homework assignment is to look at what is your gross monthly income and then look at your debt and do a, just a precursor to the um, evaluation of your debt versus um, your income in order to see how much of a house payment you could afford. The other barrier is like a cash. Like a cash is also another barrier and it's a very important one. And um, you should know that they're gonna look at your income. So a budget is really important. You can determine how much you can afford. You look at your own budget, you set up a spending plan, and that's really important. Looking at who you have to pay uh, is, is critical in buying a house. Knowing whether or not you're leaving, from, leaving um, an apartment where you pay no water to a house where you have to pay the water bill, you have to pay the trash collection bill and all of that other stuff that's associated with the home. Here's Yolanda again. What cuts, if you look at her budget, this is the budget that she gave us. If you look at her budget, what cuts can Yolanda make? Are there any cuts? Would you suggest she make cuts? You know, she, She's not on the line, so you can let us know. So how much, what cuts can she make in her spending plan? Go to the chat box and let us know and tell us what people are saying. Um, Latanya and also Herman, please. All right, Herman and I would probably argue about this, but I'm sure <laughs> the eating out could be cut. Wow. That, that was one of the first suggestions. Uh huh. Is right. there anything else? Dry cleaners. Someone says church. I'm not going to look Cable. at anyone's hives. Cable. We cut the premium cleaners. channels. I need ESPN. Did we somebody need say premium. church? <laughs> I'm not going to touch tithing. <laughs> yeah. okay. Cell phone. Reduce cell phone. Okay. Okay. So, so this is a very tough group that's on the call right now. They're cutting out a bunch of stuff. So, you know, she can make adjustments and it's up to Yolanda to make those adjustments because she has to live with it. Whatever it is, she has to live with it. We may say cut the church, but that may be something that's near and dear to her. Cable, yeah, she could cut cable, but that may be something that's near and dear to her. That's the only thing she's got. But she is doing eating out and 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 maybe going to the movies occasionally. You know, do we want to script somebody of all of the fun stuff? I, I'm not sure. You know, but you know, there she can make some adjustments. And so we look at this, and and we know that even when I bought my very first home, I had to make some adjustments. We had just bought an automobile and I just, the, the automobile payment was super high and we had to refinance it to get it, a, make a lower uh, monthly payment on that automobile because I couldn't qualify, not with the automobile payment we had. And yeah, 
making adjustments on the cable. We made some adjustments. We paid down debt until we were ready to go ahead and submit our application. You may have to do the same thing. Now, here's a recommendation as to what you should spend. Yolanda may, was, may have been spending too much in certain areas. Uh, this recommendation comes from the extension service of what percentage of your, your net income should be going to food, healthcare, utilities, transportation, clothing, housing, and savings and other expenses. And that's, that's a general rule of thumb, but no one knows your situation, but it helps. So there are some myths out there. Here are the myths. Home ownership is too expensive. I need a large down payment. Not necessarily so. Uh, you do need a down payment, but there are programs out there that can help you with your down payment. 20% now, there are programs that allow for a 3% down. There are programs that give you the down payment assistance and your involvement could only be $500 or $1,500, depending upon the program that you're taking advantage of. So not all programs are the same. You ask the question, know that there's money out there to help you. There's state money, there's local money from the county and uh, local government. And so there's money there. Now understand these terms. And, and I really wanted to share this one with you. There's grants out there, money you don't pay back. <clears throat> Excuse me. You don't pay back at all. There's also forgivable loans, and it's forgiven over a period of time. There's deferred loans. They give you the money, and the payment is not required until you sell the home. And there's also a low interest rate loan. I'm going to go on mute for just a second. Hold on, please. No worries, Cora. Thank you so much for all of this good information. And I know there's also local programs that people can actually check out for down payment assistance. Thank you so much, Latanya. You're absolutely right. Here are some programs. I heard that there are several of you from the Pennsylvania area in the state of Pennsylvania. You may be from some of the counties that are listed here. Um, the reason for showing this particular slide is to let you see for Pennsylvania, they have special programs. Under those special programs, the down payment assistance could be as low as 5,000 or as high as 10,000. But you also have special programs from, from some of the counties that you also live in. County programs can be up to 1,000 on the low end. Um, and we have one particular county, Montgomery County, up to um, $10,000. So this is all for the state of Pennsylvania. Let's look at Florida. I heard that there are some folks on the call from Florida. You have the Florida Assist Program can provide down payment assistance for up to um, $10,000 with zero interest. It's a deferred second mortgage, which will be paid off at the time the person sells the home. And then you also have other programs um, in order to assist with a 3%, 4%, or 5% down payment uh, assistance for a second mortgage that would be against the property. And again, this one is forgiven at a weight of 20% over a period of a five-year time term time frame. And there's some other um, Florida programs for different counties that just kind of give you an idea. So is there money out there to help? Yes, there is. How much money do I need in order to get into home ownership? You ask, here's a guesstimate. Here's a good guesstimate. Earnest money. Earnest money deposit could be as little as a thousand. I've seen uh, clients that only had to put $500 down in order to hold the house. In some markets, I've worked with clients in the Maryland area, DC area, where they had to put down $20,000, $30,000 because the price of the homes were so expensive. There could be an application fee to the lender, not always. Um, you have to pay this up front, but sometimes you do. A home inspection fee from $250 to $700 down payment three to 
of the housing price, the home price, closing costs, three to 9% of the loan amount. And then you've got moving expenses, which could run you somewhere between two to $5,000, depending upon who you use. If you're using a friend or a brother or, or someone in the community, it may be even less than that. So just know that the cost is there, um, but don't be afraid of it because there are programs out there in order to be able to assist you. We also have a barrier of poor credit. Credit is, is probably one of the biggest things. And a lot of people think that you have to have perfect credit. That's a myth. Reality, perfect credit, I don't even know if it really exists. You know, they do look at your credit scores. And as Herman mentioned, the higher your credit score, the better your, your interest rate will be. Thank you so much, Latanya. I appreciate it. Um, the higher your credit, the higher your interest rate would be. So you really want to go through that. Uh, we are providing you with a copy of today's presentation. And in the presentation, we've got the uh, information that we're covering and, and we will make ourselves available to you. Herman has pulled his team on the call that is available. We, we're gonna give you a telephone number in which you can call. If you've got questions that you want to talk with a counselor, We've got the counselors on the call tonight, and they are they will be waiting for your phone call uh, tomorrow to be able to assist you and walk you through the process. So when I'm married, my credit report is merged with my spouse. It stays the same. It, it shows the spouse uh, debt in a separate section is wiped clean. It stays the same. Um, using a debt management company will destroy my credit. A lot of people think that. That's false. That is not true. Can an employer get a copy of my credit report without my permission? No, an employer needs your permission in order to get a copy of your credit report. Understand what your credit report looks like. Make sure that you pull a copy of it. I'm going to recommend, recommend that you go to annualcreditreport.com, annualcreditreport.com. And Latanya, if you could please put that in the chat box for us, because you can pull a copy of your, your credit report from annualcreditreport.com weekly, okay? You can pull it weekly right now. Thank you so much. Latanya. So please get a copy of your credit report. And there's the information for all the bureaus. Do a screenshot, get your phone out, make a picture of this. Latanya has also put it in the chat box for you. How long does information stay on your credit file? Don't get weary, okay? Please don't get weary. If there's things out there, you can clean it up. There are things that you can do in order to improve your overall look. The whole thing is to make sure that you get a good picture and a good sense of what's going on right now on your credit. When you get a copy of tonight's presentation, make sure that you go through the entire presentation because there's a lot of information as, re as it relates to your rights, how to deal with certain things. We've got just an enormous amount of resources that are available to you. Um, at this point, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I will see if I can um, see if there's a way, LaTanya, if you could go to just the resources, I'll stop sharing and allow you to share so that they can see all of the resources and man, I am impressed right now because I see all of you that are on the call and this is absolutely amazing. It's amazing to see all of you. I'd just like for them to see the resource section so that they can see all of the resources and also the telephone number to um, NFCC affiliates that may be on the call tonight. Okay. Can you guys see the screen, Cora, with the My Home? Freddie Mac has a consumer site. I don't see your you do screen. Not see it. You do not see it. Okay, let me do it one more time. Okay, All right. so let's now we, we see it. All right, so we definitely put have it in PowerPoint mode. All right, let me go ahead and switch it. All right, is that better for you? Yep. Yeah, go back a, a slide and yeah, right here. 
right here. Here's our resource, starting with the NFCC counseling resources. We've got several. There, there are many. And Herman, I'm going to allow you to talk yep. to this and uh, tell them a little bit about the link at the bottom and the telephone number. Okay, absolutely. Thank you, Cora. And thank you for a wonderful presentation thus far. Um, this is meant to connect you, the audience, with the resources. We always want to support you in your endeavors. We want you to make fact-based decisions. And so for that reason, what you see here is the telephone. When you want to connect with a housing counselor or a credit counselor, you dial that number, it goes to our locator, and based upon where you live, it will identify one of our member agencies that is in closest proximity to you so that you can make the connection and get counseled in whatever area you want. In terms of the areas that we can counsel you in, they're listed here on the right, basic financial literacy, credit management, housing counseling, student loan counseling, bankruptcy counseling, as well as small business owners. For those of you who are joined by, and let me give you, for those who are on the telephone, the contact number is 833-691-6299. Again, that number is 833-691-6299. For those of you who are looking to connect and have a link directly to the locator service, it is partner.nfcc.org slash faith hyphen based. Again, that's partner.nfcc.org slash faith hyphen based. That link will take you to the locator. And again, you will it will search based upon where you live and connect you with an agency in close proximity to you. So, and if we can go back one more, if we can go back one more, all right? For those of you, uh, this, now I'm talking to the pastors and the reverends and, what, and, and, and organization leaders, faith-based leaders. If you're interested in becoming part of the Faith-Based Alliance, I would ask that you contact my colleague, Pam Peterson. You can send her an email and her email address is pcarter, P-C-A-R-T-E-R, -E at nfcc.org. Again, that's P-C-A-R-T-E-R -E at nfcc.org. And I would ask that you provide the contact that you want her, that you want us to interact with. Provide that person's first and last name, their email address, their telephone number, the name of your faith-based organization and the street address of that faith-based organization. And we'll get in contact and onboard you and you can be a part of the planning and the go for process of this. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Latanya for the other wonderful resources we have for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Freddie Mac has a consumer-based website called My Home. It's located at myhome.freddiemac.com. We have information on everything from home buying to refinancing. There are calculators on there to help you get started with your budget. If you're in the, ref you know, if you've already gotten a home and you wanna know more about refinancing calculators, that's there. For those of you that want a self-paced course, on home buying, we have Credit Smart Home Buyer U. Those that need money management, we have Credit Mac Credit Smart Essentials. Uh, as you see, we are part of the Diverse um, Resource Network consumer page also, and you can go there and find different information about your credit score. We also have access to HUD approved housing counseling agencies in addition to the other agencies that were mentioned earlier and the annualcreditreport.com. There are so many resources that Cora, Herman, and all of the pastors tonight wanted us to share with you. There's a HUD home buying resource. We have bankrate.com when you're looking for more information on lending. And then we have a US mortgage calculator. You will get all of this information. So right now, Cora, would you like to take any questions from the audience or would you like to go back through other portions of the presentation? You know what, if, if there's questions from the audience, I'll, I'll be more than happy to try and take those questions. One of the things that we want wanted to impress upon you is that credit, yeah, that's really important. It is important. But there are a lot of other issues that are uh, things that are equally as important. Don't let 
anything stop you from pursuing your quest of home ownership. Don't let anything stop you. Home ownership is a possibility. I've worked with clients, um, providing direct services to clients that it may have taken them a year in order to get position to be able to buy a home. So don't let credit be your, your um, deterrent to stop you from pursuing. Um, and, know can that- I, Can I add option. one thing? Yes. Can, some of the other obstacles, honestly, mm -hmm. to people buying home, myths and misinformation. Absolutely. Dealing in myths and misinformation. Can and I, I give a myth? Hermione, absolutely, you absolutely. All right, you still need 20% down. Mm -mm. Yeah, not true, not true. No, not at all. The other part is people assume that they can't qualify. And I'm going to raise my hand on that. The first mm -hmm. home that I bought with my wife, we would do what I call dream building. And we were in a nice neighborhood and we were driving. This is back in the early 90s where two car garage, 300,000, three car garage, 400,000. Mm -hmm. So we're driving and looking and it was nice. And we just walked through the model and said, man, one day this is going to be really nice. We're going to get this. And as we were leaving, the salesperson said, hey, 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 where are you going? We said, well, this is nice. We were just kind of getting an idea, but we don't think we can qualify. Mm -hmm. Well, before you make that assumption, let's let's sit down and sharpen a pencil and see what you can do. Right. And we, it was, we invested literally half hour, 45 minutes. And by the time it was said and done, not only could we qualify, mm -hmm. but we could qualify comfortably and still have enough to eat afterwards. So. <laughs> That was exciting. Yeah. And as a result, we bought a house in that community. Yeah. But again, we were self-selecting out, dealing with myths like, oh, we can never do that. So that's why it's important you connect with a resource, a subject matter expert who can direct you to make sure you don't make mistakes, that you yeah. don't leave opportunities on the table. That's what housing counselors do. They are your coaches, they are your partners, yeah. and they're there for your benefit. Absolutely. I have another myth for you guys. What's that? I have to accept the loan product that my loan officer gave to me. No, yeah, it's not. You don't. You don't. You um, there. You definitely can negotiate. Um, I, I've. It's all about knowing where you stand and knowing the value of where you stand knowing the value of the income that you have, knowing the value of your credit. Uh, anything is negotiable. Anything is negotiable. So don't be afraid to ask. Um, I've, I've, I'm one of the ones that challenge almost anything that comes my way, even buying, buying furniture. So I, I believe that anything is negotiable. I've worked with clients through the process and lenders have come up. And, and you know, it's all about knowing the right person. There are some really good lenders out there, some really good lenders that will shop around and make sure they get you the best deal out there. Uh, but you gotta know the process as well and know that you are still, regardless of what your situation may be, you still have the power to make a decision as to whether or not I want that product or I'm, I'm gonna shop around and go to something else. And I, I, I gotta say this, when my, when my mother made the decision to move my family from the Bronx, New York, in one of the hoodiest of hoods, <laughs> to the suburbs that is Teaneck, New Jersey, that one move changed the trajectory of my life and yeah. the life of my brother, my younger brother and sister. One move, one decision mm -hmm. changed all the possibilities that would fall for the rest of my life. This is something that is important because it affects you, it affects your self-confidence, it affects your mindset, your ideas about your possibilities, about what you deserve, about who you are, what you can learn, what you can be. So that's why it's important that we make these resources available so that mm -hmm. people can live in their purpose and realize their potential. Mm -hmm. Adults, children, this generation and future generations, we're in the business of creating miracles. That's what we want, that's what we're here for. So. I get fired up about this. And I don't want you to leave here thinking you can't, you can. Yeah. There's no reason for you to think you can't because you can. And we're here to make that possible. 
And I think I, I think the other point, Herman, that it goes back to the fact that we brought a team of people together in order for them to have the for all of all of you that are on the call that's actively looking and and want to become a homeowner at some point. There are individuals on the call today that are here to try and help you through that process. They understand the steps to home ownership and they understand the whole thing about credit. Uh, they, they understand what lenders look at. Uh, the same things that I went over tonight, uh, they understand that. And, and, and many of them may be in your own community and they understand what are the requirements in your particular state, in your particular community or county. So um, seek out wise counsel. That's what it's all about. I mean, the word tells us that we should seek wise counsel. And that's why we do what we do. Uh, Herman gave us a very passionate uh, message before we got started uh, this evening and, and really talking to each of us, the team, about why we do what we do. And it's because we really want to make a difference in the lives of those of you who are on the call that are looking to achieve the American dream. Any other um, myths, Latanya? Let's see. Ah, what's a good myth? Well, I got one. Okay, give me a good one. I'm thinking of some more. That that banks won't lend to somebody like me. I'm sorry, repeat that one more time. Sure, banks won't lend to somebody like me. My income, where I live, what I look like, where I work. I They've invite got specific you. products to help people. I invite you to start the process with our local lenders, credit unions, because I think right now in this day and age, we're each in a better opportunity as credit, you know, Cora told us, you know, there are many different ways to look at our credit. There are many mitigating factors that our lending institutions are looking at now. They are looking at multi-generational lending mm -hmm. whereby you can actually, you know, borrow money with another co-borrower. So those are all things we need to look at. So I think, Herman, that myth, we, we have to shatter that myth. And, yeah, absolutely. You know, the banks and lending institutions, they are coming to where we are at. They are meeting us where we're at. Um, I do see a myth in here. Don't let other mortgage lenders pull your credit. It will destroy your credit. Thank you so much, Mr. Graves. Cora and Herman, what do you guys think about that? You know, you're, it, when you're searching for a home or an automobile, um, FICO has done something a few years ago. They, they looked at um, how folks shop around and look for credit during the, the home buying process and buying a car. And, and what they decided to do is to revisit the, the way that they count inquiries for a mortgage or an automobile during a certain period of time. And usually it's a 30 day time frame. Uh, they call it deduping. And under the dedupe, they don't count an inquiry, multiple inquiries, multiple times. They count it as one inquiry for a car and also a house. So um, there's been some change and that happened a few years ago where um, they've, they've done that. And the impact of looking around or having somebody pull your credit, if it's all within a certain time frame, and the time frame that they only count it as one inquiry is a 30-day time frame and a 45-day time frame. And so those inquiries that are pulled, when the credit is pulled, then it's only counted one time. Now, that's not the same with other debt. If, you, if you're shopping around for um, a credit card, you're, it's the holidays, you're going to the mall and, and you're applying for all of these credit cards in order to get the 15% discount. Uh, those inquiries are, are counted by for each inquiry that's done and that could have a devastating impact on your credit score. Uh, but the main thing is to try and manage it as best you possibly can um, and not uh, over, um, not having too many people pull your credit um, in a 
in a period of time in order to not have that negative impact. Well, that was the last one in our list. Okay. Is there any other comments in, uh, in the chat box or anything that people are sharing in the chat box? Uh, this was great. Some people had to drop off. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Definitely the mention that certain banks do have down payment assistance programs for you to look into. You want to look into layered financing. You want to ensure that you are optimizing all of the money that's out there. You want to make sure you are getting the most <laughs> out of your own credit. So you're not, you know, paying too much in interest and you have more money to shop with. And Thank you. Here's another thing. There are, you know, there's a category LMI, low to moderate income. And a lot mm -hmm. of people see that as a cross to bear. Here's the thing. Use what you got. There are certain banks that have CRA credit where they've got to basically invest in the community. What that means is there are certain banks that have down payment assistance specifically for LMI borrowers. Mm -hmm. And it's a good chunk of change, 10,000, 17,000. Take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Understand what the terms are, but use what you got to get what you want financially. And down payment assistance is a viable option that can really help to reduce the amount of out-of-pocket expense you experience when you go to closing so that you have more money on hand should you have a financial shock after you close. You want to have as much money in your pocket as you possibly can to, one, decorate your home the way you want to get the nice furniture, don't go crazy, <laughs> hold off on the new car, just make sure you have an emergency fund, but use and leverage down payment assistance to your benefit. What do you think is the best tip either of you would have given to yourself back in the day? And can I start? Yes. yes. I would have definitely made my extra payment to my principal every year when I got my mortgage. That's probably the best tip that mm -hmm. I was given. And I actually, I didn't follow it, you guys. So, okay. So for me, it, it would have been, and I bought my, we, we bought several homes and um, the very first house, I was happy to be at the table. I was just happy to be at the table. And, and I think being happy to be at the table caused me to be led through a process that was not beneficial to, to me. And um, I want to encourage the folks who are on the call to know that they can achieve home ownership, that they should not, not believe that they can achieve it. They can achieve it. And bad credit is not unto death, that you can work through credit issues uh, without a problem. And I, I knew nothing about down payment assistance. So our very first home, we had to come up with all of the cash ourselves. And, and we didn't come from a family where we could borrow the money from our mom or dad. Um, so it was money, it was our investment. And we got no down payment assistance because we didn't know. We're here to tell you there is money out there in almost every market in the United States to help you be able to achieve home ownership. So kind of search it out, do your, your due diligence on your end. Herman, what I will about take, you? I will take all that you said, but honestly, for me, I'm, I grew up as an athlete. And so I like being coached. I would have plugged into a housing counselor because buying a home is one of the most important, expensive, complicated transactions you'll ever have in your life. And I didn't know what I didn't know, didn't know where to go to find out. So when I went to closing, my brother was with me. We sat at the table and we read every document they had, the fine print. And they were like, are, are, you, are, you going, are, you, are you going to read all of that? <laughs> Absolutely. If you put it in front of me, we're going to read it. I'm going to read yes. this, that. He's going to read that, that. And then we're going to switch. As a former title closing person, you guys don't know how I would have clapped for someone to do that. 
-hmm. Most people at the end of the day, they just want the keys. But what Herman is saying is we have to understand this responsibility that we are getting involved in. And I wish I did have the class that, you know, you're saying to go through, you know, an eight hour home buyer education class to let me know start to finish. And this is definitely being echoed in the chat. Thank you, Jackie, for responding because it's the truth. So thank you, Herman. Thank you, Cora. I got one other thing. Don't All be right, one more, because I got to invite Pastor yeah. Murphy back on here. Yeah. Do, do not allow yourself to be intimidated in the process. Do not be bullied. That's a good one. That's Absolutely. Good. That's a good one. That is Herman. It was quick, see? Yeah, that was good. That was good. I'm going to pass it over to Pastor Murphy. Well, thank you. So, so let me just chime in. I have a tip as well. Uh, one of the things I would say, and it was mentioned earlier, is make sure you check your credit report for errors. Yeah. Uh, it was one of the things that was suggested to me, and I did find several errors in my credit report when my wife and I were, were getting ready uh, to go for our mortgage. There were a couple of accounts that were still open that had been closed. There were a couple of accounts that were duplicated with my first and last name, but also my first name, middle initial and last name. And so once we got those removed, we were able to understand what our uh, true credit score uh, was going into the process. And so that was an important for me. Um, I do see that, that uh, Pastor Jones has joined us. So I will give uh, my uh, closing remarks and then turn it over to him to close us out as he so eloquently does. I just want to thank everyone for joining us today and taking advantage of all of this wonderful information from our subject matter experts and want to thank the team of subject matter experts, including Latanya and Hermine, and especially Cora Fulmore for all of the work that she does in preparation for these workshops, the, the PowerPoint presentation, and then just the presentation of all of this uh, information. And of course, the gathering all of, the re of all of the resources that this team uh, puts together for you. And I just want to uh, personally thank them and also encourage you, you can do this. Uh, don't be discouraged. Uh, don't be dismayed. You can do this. And for those of you who believe like I believe, you can do all things through Christ who yes. strengthens you, but also take advantage of all of the resources uh, at your disposal to make this process easier for you. With that, again, I thank you for joining us today, and I will turn it over to uh, Pastor Jones to close us out. Thank you so much, Associate Pastor Murphy. Thank you so much to Enon, uh, the Enon Tabernacle Baptist Church. It's Pastor Reverend Dr. Allen Waller. So I thank all of you. I thank all of you who've joined from around the country, from various nonprofit organizations, from there is congregations. Thank you to those of you on the phone. I know it is a different experience, uh, but I am grateful that several of you are likely on the phone. And so I thank you for all of that. Um, I just want to say ditto to everything Associate Pastor Murphy has said, and just remind those of us that are uh, biblically oriented believers uh, that home is very much a real part of even the promises of God. Please don't misunderstand and have me project it that the promise for you is a particular home in a particular neighborhood. But there is some sense that uh, having a place where the land, home, all of those things are all part and parcel of having the kind of uh, landing place, security, uh, generational transformation that uh, Herman talked about. And so I am grateful very much for this opportunity to bring a practical, contemporary way of helping people wherever they are from in whatever circumstance they are in to be able to receive for themselves that promise of land and home that is so endemic to all of us who believe in the scripture. There is something uh, that came to mind uh, for me this week. Um, I, when I was in my um, late teen years and early 20 years, I was initially exposed to positive thinking and, and I liked it. Uh, you know, I readily admit that it, it, it said something to me and there were some things that were said and uh, it helped, it was helpful, but I've come to a, um, a place that goes beyond positive thinking. Let me give you the contrast and then the final words will serve as benediction words around that. You probably have heard the expression as I did for the first time in my late teens, if you can conceive it, you can 
If you can conceive it and believe it, you can achieve it. And that has had all kinds of uh, various permutations to it. And as I said, I've benefited from some of that, but I've come to a different place because I found that what I can conceive and believe is rather limited. And perhaps that's the way you are thinking about trying to get yourself in a home or get your children in a home or maybe your children, grandchildren or whatever. They can't conceive it. They can't believe it. But I close with these words from Ephesians 3.20, which reminds me of my faith stance, that my imagination is not God's limitation. Now unto God, who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. That's another way of saying conceive and believe. Now unto God that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto God be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. From Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. The Lord bless you and keep you all. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Uh, and we look forward to the next uh, session, which I believe, Herman, you can uh, mind us of that. I know I've given the benediction, but uh, I suspect you probably want to at least say a word about that. Thank you. God bless everybody. And Herman, let us know, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes. Please stay tuned. We are looking to have a uh, foreclosure and eviction prevention session in October. And then in November, we are definitely going to have, and specifically on November 18th, we're going to have a shopping responsibly session to help folk develop and stay on a plan so that they don't create any financial difficulties for themselves in the future. But uh, we all want to thank you for your, for your time and your kind attention. And I thank my, my, my colleagues, my committee members, and you, the listening audience. May the Lord add a blessing to your weekend. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, Cora. Outstanding. Thank you so much. Take care, guys. So long.